Hey guys, welcome to Talking Strongman. We've got a special show for you, obviously with Auntie Liz here. I mean, you know, something must be kind of going on. Something's Auntie wrong. Liz has joined us. And we have the winner of last year's Arnold, uh, sorry, the winner of last year's Shaw Classic Amateur Competition. Yes, sir. The, the one and only Austin Andrade, who is an absolute beast. And very recent winner of the Amateur Arnold's, Nick Guardione. Absolute beast, both for you and <laughs> training partners as well. Yeah. Yep. yep. So that, that you got a strong gym that you guys are, are kind of coming out of. Yeah, heavy metal fitness here in San Antonio. Um, got a sign it's, in the uh, back. Do what? It's our banner. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Banners up behind. We're you. branded too. Oh wow! <laughs> both of you. <laughs> it's, Look at it's, the size yeah, of that right. arm as well. Did you see the size yeah, of that? Arm? <laughs> so, yeah, we uh, we love it. We love it. It's our whole life. Um, it's my full time job, uh, and it's uh, it's everything for us. Well, Austin, uh, we met you last year. Um, mm -hmm. You came over to Cardiff, actually. I think it was yes, um, Giants Live in Cardiff, and you know, no prep at all. Took the competition last minute and, and did fantastic. I think you smashed a PB in the deadlift. No <laughs> suit. You you know, last year was a great year for you, to be fair. You, mm -hmm. you can have obviously the, the short classic amateur show you won. You're going to be competing in that this year, the, mm -hmm. the pro yeah. show. Of uh, course, you, yeah, I'm not missing that one. Yeah. You won uh, one of the SCL competitions as well, I believe. Most yeah, it was one of their, like, um, si no, I won't say side show. It wasn't a part of, like, their tour or how they get to the finals, but it was World's Strongest Latino, and uh, I represented Mexico. And so that's what I'll be doing at Worlds this year, representing Mexico through them. But that's what I wanted to go to. You're, you're going to your first ever World's Strongest Man this year, which must be yeah. fun. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. I, I, it's still. I'm work three weeks out, and I'm still like, kind of like, I mean, is this really happening? Kind of thing. But no, we're training hard for it. So yeah. Have you been before as a spectator? No, and that's one thing I've, I've always said. Like, um, like I, I grew up playing football and and uh, wrestling, and like I was like. You ever want to go to an NFL game, or you ever want to go? To, I was like, if I'm ever going to play an NFL game, it's if or if I'm going to watch it, I'm going to be playing in it. So it's the same thing with Worlds. Like, I never really had a desire to go watch it. If I was going to watch it, it's it's because I'm competing in it. I, I love that sort of mentality. I remember my first competition against Mark Felix, and my mate was like, "Oh, go and have a photo with him," and I was like. No, I don't want to have a photo with him. Yeah. I want to sort of earn his respect. And then like a year later, I was just sat on an airplane next to him heading to World's Strongest Man. So I, I love that sort of mentality. It's, you know, you, you, you want to earn your way there and, and belong. And, you know, you, you've certainly done that, buddy. I mean, both of you, both of you have been fantastic this last year. I mean, you were mentioning earlier, um, Thomas Evans, obviously, he won the two competitions that you guys have won, and he's gone yep. on to compete with the Arnolds. He's competed at um, World's Strongest Man, done Short very, very well, Short yeah. Classic. And, and, you know, you guys are kind of following in that foot, those footsteps now. Yeah, he's a good he's a good buddy of ours at this point. We're uh, we're following in his footsteps for sure. He laid out the path. Yeah, 100%. he did. He's a, he's a good dude too. So, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of it's, – it's been nice to see that, you know, him do it and go go about that path. And now we're right, right behind him. But, you know, I definitely – Look at him as a peer now too, not just the older yeah. brother kind of. So. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys get competitive with each other? Oh yeah, we got competitive. It, it never it up. It's never stopped. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's forever. I think I think that's what the success comes from. It's because yeah. it never stops. But it's it's a brother, brotherly competitiveness. It's yeah. nothing's malicious at any point. I mean, but I think that's the nature of strongman too. You know, you're you're going out there, you're having fun with your your boys and and lifting weights and. And honestly, if Nick does better than me, then it's it's just it only pushes me to for the next thing to do better. And and you know, it's it, we kind of work off each other that way. Yeah, they're almost like the um the American version of Shane and Kane. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. they are. Yeah. Shane and Kane. Yeah. That one's Shane. <laughs> <laughs> so so he's the troublemaker. Yeah? yeah, yeah, you can tell. I'm getting the vibes yeah. from Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, is Nick Nick's the troublemaker. You're course. very correct. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Shane and Kane are as bad as each other, but yeah. Shane hides it better, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we decided with you two. But we did get to spend time with you both at the Rogue Invitational as well. Because am I right in thinking you guys sometimes train with Trey Mitchell? Yep. Yeah, we, yep. We, we he's, to, uh, he's about well, he's about four hours away, but that's closer in Texas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah we so drive down the road. Morning. Yeah, we'll spend a morning going over to the drive over there or like he's come in and stayed at my house here for about a week and we trained before um Arnold's before Arnold's last year. Um yeah, he's he's a monster. 
Yeah. And he's coming back so quick from the Achilles tear. It's it's inspiring. Well, he's he's turned into like a like a, he's like one of the you know he's always like almost a trio to us. I yeah. mean, we've been looking up to him, you know, coming up in our strongman career. So he's he's but we consider him one of the Texas boys too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got some strong dudes in Texas, to be fair. <laughs> a in, lot of strong. It's dudes, in the yeah. water. I don't know. We got some something in the water. We we like to joke with Trey that it's the well water because he doesn't have he doesn't have city water. His house he has like a well that he goes and gets his water from. So he'll bring a whole he'll bring a whole jug of well water every time he comes to visit. And it, it'll make it stronger. Yeah, it's water from the earth, not from the earth. Processed. <laughs> <laughs> but the Texas barbecue doesn't hurt either. No, no, no. That's yeah. You, all that means. You've eaten very well in Texas. Right. <laughs> a, a little too well. I, 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 I would definitely be over four hundred pounds if I was from Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Austin already is. Like, what, what? Hey, hey, I've gotten down because worlds. I've gotten down. He's, under he's slimming down. I'm he's under slimming four down. Now, so you're under four hundred now. Yeah. I know, but at the Arnold's, I think you said you're over four hundred. I was just I was just at four, um, but f at, at Cardiff last year. I think. What are you like three ninety eight now? I was <laughs> no three ninety. I'm actually three ninety nine point nine. <laughs> well, what about yourself, Nick? How how much are you? Uh, I I have a lot of trouble gaining weight. Um, I'm going to be working with Nathan Payton here pretty soon, but I'm I'm sitting around three thirty five right now. I lost oh, about ten pounds since the Arnold right. Amateur, um, <laughs> but. When I started training, um, I, I was a cross country runner, so I weighed like 180 pounds, um, and I basically doubled my body weight in the past eight years or so training strongman. Um, and it's it's a full time job for me. I, I don't stop eating the whole day. Of you before you started doing strongman, yes. so we can put it. Up it, on it doesn't. It doesn't. Look, it doesn't. It's not it's me. No good. <laughs> it's not we've, me. We've, we've all right. So we've been. But I, I'll I've been pulled over when we've been pulled over one time. He had to show his ID to the cop, and the cop's like, "That's not right. you." Well, yeah. Stop joking. <laughs> yeah. Well, on the way back from the Arnold Amateur, they had like the little scanners at the airport where you put your ID in and it's like, okay, that's him. They wouldn't let me through. They they were almost going to kick me off my flight because it was so different. I don't know if it's close. No, it's not. If not, I'd show it to the camera. But um, it's uh, it's a pretty big transformation. Think yeah. think Mitch Hooper level transformation. Well, I was going to yeah. say, obviously, Mitch Hooper came. Well, he did some marathons, didn't he? And he did bodybuilding. But he almost looks... Like compared to how he is now, he almost looks skeletal, doesn't he? Mm. I know it's just normal, but when you're used to these giant people yeah, sure. and you live in the land of the giants, it's um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, these Mitch looks tiny in those pictures. He does, yeah. I, yeah. We need to see your pictures. Please. And I had <laughs> because I had no traps, no shoulders, no nothing. I, it looks like I just had like a massive giraffe neck. So like my head is just like a meter off my shoulders. It's it's not a good look. His body finally really grew into his head. Neck isn't right. so big now. The, the, the traps have definitely kind of caught. <laughs> what neck? Yeah. Now you're a proper strong man. You've lost. <laughs> you've lost the neck. No neck. <laughs> it is like a sign of a strong man, isn't it? Oh, you've it got is. no neck. Yeah. <laughs> but it just disappears. Yeah. So when did you guys start training and? Did you guys start at a similar time or was one there first? How did it come about for you two? Yeah, so I, so the gym heavy metal fitness, um, I just moved to San Antonio, back to San Antonio after I got known in college and I was looking for a place to start working out and it was like the YMCA and stuff and, and I just couldn't be in there, especially being after like a college weight room. And then, so I found heavy metal and I was there for a good year um training strongman and and i well i just kind of walked in the gym just wanted to train and then they're like hey you should do strongman so i just caught the bug and did a couple shows and then it was a year later i started in 19 nick started in 20 and then it was a year later he walked in on like christmas day or something like that and and then he stayed in the gym for like eight hours touching every single strongman piece of mm -hmm. equipment we had at the gym and then next thing you know it was i was getting ready for a show and He's like, hey, can I can I join training too? It was like, yeah, man, no big deal. Like, I don't, I didn't, I hadn't have a training partner at the time, and then, so he hopped on, and then that slowly turned into like a snowball effect of, oh, well, I'm doing a show, let's do this one. Okay, we're doing a show here, let's do a show. And next thing you know, we're just, all right, we're there every single day, or we're there training at the same time, and then we just became brothers out of that. Yeah, he was the first person I met walking into heavy metal fitness. Like, I just was there to check out the gym, my university. Gym was closed, so I just came to check it out and like look at the strongman stuff. Like I didn't really know anything about it, and uh, he was the first person that I met, and we just became friends ever since. How long were you guys training before this? Like, um, had you done most just gym training before? So I had just done like maybe 
three years of just like the bro split doing a shoulder day, like a core day, like a, you know, arm day. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, like I had gained maybe like 30, 40 pounds just because I was so skinny before, but it was just noob gains. It wasn't anything like structured. It was, you know, like the Arnold bodybuilding workouts and just trying to eat as much pasta as I could. So, um, but also been training for a while. Right? Uh, yeah. I, so I grew up playing sports. And so my, my whole, like I've always played football, American football and, and I've wrestled. So I've been in a weight room since 12, 13 years old. Um, and then, you know, getting into high school and the college, I've always been in a weight room. Okay. Yeah. Cause like, it's, it, it seems to be like a common theme with top level athletes that they just, get good fast yeah no it's, it's got to be that genetic yeah, yeah. genetics are, are massively important i mean you know to for someone like nick to say he started doing strongman 2019 20 yeah right at the end of 2019 like christmas yeah. day 2019 like there, there's people that train for 10 years and they'd never get to that kind of level mm. and it's you know it, it, unfortunately for a lot of people they don't realize how important genetics are even though you started off like a skinny guy did, did you find you kind of added weight quickly Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, the diet was a big part of it. Um, but honestly just training smart, like not push. Cause I was the kind of guy that would like, you know, try and max out deadlift and squat every week, every other week. Um, like I never got hurt, but I could just tell that I wasn't making the kind of progress that I could be making. And then our coach, Tim Ingram, the owner of heavy metal fitness kind of took over my training whenever I started a heavy metal and it was just nonstop explosive, um, improvement ever since nick hasn't hit a plateau since he started and i think that all i mean when you when you talk about heavy metal fitness and you talk about how me and nick met it's it's honestly like the perfect situation when you know it's well you want to count uh, we'll add tim in there because tim's everything to us um you know he's our mentor he's our brother he's our coach he's like to you and mitch are you know we he's our a good friend but you know you get three guys all with the same mindset all with the same kind of um, support system outside the gym with his family, Nick's family, my family, and and you and you get guys that just want to get better. It sky's the limit, and and that's kind of the situation that happened, uh, or that is happening at the gym. And and Tim is is really knowledgeable, and and really uh, he's got a lot of schools uh, schooling hours, and 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 here in Texas A and M, and in kinesiology. So his whole entire background, and he's loved strength for so long. So now he's got two guinea pigs that he could just send whatever and do whatever. And we listen to him yeah. like it's full trust in whatever he says. Like when we first started training, there was a lot of like hiccups that we had to overcome with like, just like trying to listen and pay attention to detail and especially how, how detailed Tim is in his training and like having to read the notes for everything and, and you know, which handles to use on a Swiss bar and what angles we need to be pressing at, or, you know, just little stuff like that. We, we had our hiccups, but in that, but, we just we gave full um trust to him and and you know just yeah we call him the mad scientist because we'll walk in the gym at <laughs> random hours and he'll have this insane contraption with like you know like a head harness with dumbbells hanging off of it and chains and bands and you're like what are you trying to do and he'll like explain exactly what he's trying to figure out this way to hit a certain muscle but you know he's an older man now he's got two kids wife house um but he's been lifting for two Ever. decades yeah. yeah three decades and uh you know he's he's been around the block he's hurt himself every way that you can possibly imagine he's he's got that experience he's tested all these things out on himself and he knows what works and what doesn't work and um i think both of both of us are experienced enough now to be like to give him feedback on on new mm -hmm. things too like you know this doesn't really feel good or this doesn't i'm not getting all the activation i could be getting out of the certain movement i think that's really important when you're working as a coach with athletes to, to communicate with each other, it sounds like you've got like a great team there. You know, yeah. someone that, that you, you two are both very gifted, which is uh, every coach's kind of dream is to have like a gifted, like myself with Mitch, you know, Mitch is going to be good. Whoever coaches him. Yeah. But it, it's nice as a coach to have that kind of commitment from athletes like that. And then you kind of develop that family relationship and it's, you know, you, you, yeah. you're confident enough to, to give each other back and forth. And, you know, you obviously push each other as well, which is fantastic. And you've kind of created this atmosphere in this gym that just breeds success, which is, is yeah. cool to see. I think it's contagious too, because everybody that's training around us kind of feeds off that as well. Like, and we feed off of it too. Like yeah. it's, there's, there's multiple, uh, national champion powerlifters in there and, and and whatnot and just regular general fitness people that go in there too that 
want to get better or healthier or whatever it is. And yeah, as soon as, you know, as soon as you walk, as soon, it doesn't, it's cool about the gym. As soon as you walk in, it doesn't matter if you're a doctor or a lawyer or, or you work construction or whatever it is. It's like, we're all level playing field. We're all here to get better. Let's all feed off of each other. It's a beautiful thing, honestly, yeah. at Heavy Metal Fitness. So. Yeah. And we all expect greatness out of, you know, even if you're just now starting, I'm not going to let you do a crappy deadlift. You know, Austin and I have countless times stopped our workout to go help someone who, you know, doesn't know how to do a deadlift, doesn't know how to squat. They come up and ask us questions. <laughs> Honestly, to one, so they don't get hurt. Yeah. And then, and then two, so we could, we can build that kind of family community in the gym too. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, that's cool. I think being around the right people and in the right place is so important. Like, you wouldn't believe the amount of questions we get on live streams. People are like, I'm not allowed to use chalk in my gym. Oh, like, just go to a different gym. You're in the wrong <laughs> gym. If you seriously want to pursue if, strongman. If you're genuinely <laughs> serious about your training, you need to be in the right environment. Yeah. yeah. You know, if, if you've got a gym that's not letting you use chalk or doesn't have, you know, the equipment that you need. Doesn't then, like the sound of a weight yeah. hitting the floor. <laughs> it's time to, to be serious and go somewhere yeah. else. I didn't do yep. <laughs> <laughs> so something I ask everyone that can, especially first time they're on with us, is um, what got you into this stuff? You know, what got you into Strongman? Because, you know, for, for me, it was, I, I was watching Strongman from a young age. But I know for a lot of, like, newer athletes, well, especially in America, it seems to be, um, a lot of people didn't watch World's Strongest Man sort of when they're younger. There's different sports and, and different things on TV. So were you sort of fans of Strongman before or had you always kind of just done other sports and just kind of came a, a, across Strongman? So, I mean, I, I grew up watching Strongman. Like it was on during Christmas time and ESPN would put on these like seven day blocks of it. You know, this, they would just run through it. And I would remember watching it at a young age. I want to say seven or eight. Um but in, in, in America, like it's never a that's not like an end goal for us here. It's it's it's, you know, it's the NFL, NBA, MLB or something like that. And, you know, that's that's the professional sport route here. Um, so we all I just, you know, kind of grew up watching it and and, you know, just focus on football and whatnot. And it wasn't until after I graduated college and I needed that competitive outlet again that I just wanted to lift again so i didn't know whether it was gonna be powerlifting strongman well i just wanted to lift again really was what it was and then um i started lifting strongman and next thing you know it was like well i can do what they're doing i i could it's like that that weight's not too far off of what i'm doing or that's not you know what i mean and then i'm i'm winning all these amateur shows and i'm and this this hobby slowly turned into um something serious so i mean that's how i really got into it yeah Cool. For me, it was the opposite. I like I did cross country in high school and middle school. And, you know, there was kind of like this stigma of, you know, like there's the football players who lift weights, you know, and then there's, you know, like the athletic guys. Um, and you know, just because my friends didn't lift weights, I didn't lift weights and I didn't enjoy it until I really gave it a fair shake. Um, and so it wasn't until, you know, my dad passed in when I was in, in college I kind of needed that outlet. I started lifting weights. I kind of fell in love with the process of just getting better and eating and, you know, having that mindset every single day of every, you know, nitpicking all of your habits to improve at, from all these different angles. Um, and then I just walked into heavy metal and something about it. Like I had never even seen World Strongest Man. I'd never heard anything about World Strongest Man, um, but I had watched maybe like a couple of Thor's YouTube channel videos and, um, it just so happened to be like the week or two before I went to visit heavy metal for the first time. And I walked in and I saw this big metal who's sitting on the wall. I was like, Hey, I saw Thor do that. Like maybe I, maybe I can give that a try. And uh, I think the first day I did three, first day I did like 300 pounds on the who's fell. Um, and I just, I tried log, I tried circus dumbbell, I tried everything. Um, and just the, just the movements and hanging out with Austin and um, the environment I fell in love with that aspect. And then when I did my first novice competition, um, then I fell in love with the sport and then it just sort of snowballed from there. Um, do you guys, oh, sorry. Um, no, do ahead, you I'll... consider yourself fans now? Like, do you follow the sport quite closely oh, now? Yeah, God, yeah. It's everything. You know, it's it's seriously everything. We're watching your show. You're like the sports center of Strongman. <laughs> yeah. So whenever y'all post something, we're watching it right away. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And same thing with all the other guys that have YouTube channels. And yeah, yeah we just become nerds to it. So it's yeah. like every, pretty much you know. every ADL stream I'm watching, every, you know, like, <laughs> I know I follow everybody. So. Yeah, I just I love it. I love it. I love it. I, like I, I like to, you know, 
improve, but I love seeing all my buddies who I've met get better and win shows and go overseas and level up and hit these big PVs. And I don't know, it's just such a positive, um, it's definitely a different. Yeah, well, it was definitely a different it, sport so nice, from like what I'm like growing up, like it's like football, wrestling, whatever. You're always going against an opponent, right? It's mm -hmm. you're reacting off of someone's reaction. And there's, you know, there is some kind of like, I want to beat this guy, right? Like, sure. like almost malicious thing. Like I, when I played football, I honestly played football to hurt someone. Like I had that, you had to go walk on that field or else you're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and then you get into a straw man and, Next, you know, I'm lifting weights and, or I'm lifting and I hit seven and he's go for eight. And I'm like, dude, I, you, I, if I hit eight, you're, I'm going to beat you. And they're like cheering for you and you're just kind of thrown off by it. But it, it just like the contagious, like positive environment is, is really nice to have. I think that's what kept me, that's what keeps me in the sport too. Like yeah. growing up in the other sports, you kind of just kind of get burned out of it. You just, you're always like, you're always in this kind of like go, go mindset trying to beat people. And now it's, you know, it's it's a lot more contagious of, of being positive. I think that's why strawman is so um, like infectious to everybody too, because you know everybody has highs and lows. You know, whenever you're obsessed with something, right? Like if you're if you're in football, you're gonna have a bad game. You know, and and people can take advantage of that. But I think in strawman, because everybody's so positive and so supportive, it'll get you through those low points and keep you rolling. You know, until you get back to a high. So. Um, because when I was a kid, I would I would find these things that I would be obsessed with for, you know, three months, six months, a year. And then, you know, something would happen and I, you know, would kind of fall out of it. Um, but I, with Strongman, it's just it's just never ending love. You know what I mean? That's good. Mm. I mean, have you had to experience any sort of setbacks with Strongman? Because I mean, you know, <laughs> Shut up, Austin, dude. Austin was saying like your progress has just been sort of nonstop recently. Uh, and, you know, so uh, I, I haven't had any major injuries. Um that's yeah. Thanks. Knock thanks, on wood. Yeah, knock, on, knock on wood. Thanks to Tim. Thanks to our training. Like we, we're all like staying healthy is at the top of our, our, you know, what is the priorities? Yeah. But um, this guy over here decided. So, so I'll let him tell. All you. my all my injuries have been self sustained. Uh, so I I used to <laughs> shut up. So <laughs> to get to get through college, um, I I like made custom knives and jewelry and and that kind of thing. Hey, these are awesome knives, by the way. He's a he's a real craftsman at thank this you, stuff. Thank you, thank you. But um, so I have a garage full of tools, and I like to make stuff, and I like to fix stuff. Um, well. <laughs> shut up let me get through it so i have i have a big band saw which is like a saw that kind of turns in a circle like it's not a circular saw but it's a big band saw and um i was messing around in the garage and this is like the day after we did texas strongest man with trey and josh Thigpen yeah, yeah. and, and austin and um the band saw fell onto me this is what this tattoo is for so this entire line right here is where oh, the saw cut through my hands oh, right <laughs> and severed and severed every single extensor tendon in my hand. Oh my god! Um, and so I have a I have a video on my Instagram if you would like to go watch it. Um, I don't think I would. It, it looks like it looks like a scene of this like a Saw movie or something. Oh, oh, I had a little security camera in my garage, so but you can it's kind of off camera, but like you can hear me and the oh. Saw falling. And then yeah. I go, I'm on frame, I'm in frame on the camera now, and I go to reach for a towel to like stop the bleeding, and all my fingers are all floppy and I can't grab wow. the towel. Hey, dude, oh, it happened, it happened April 1st, right? April 1st. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so that was this so the anniversary of it too. It wasn't too long ago. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. like so it was like three years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Oh my two well, so he texts me. I'm I'm at the grocery store, right? And I'm leaving, and we're like, all right, we got the train tomorrow, you know, I'm trying to get the mindset right. And I get a text, uh, hey, I'm in the hospital. I'm like and he's like, you're lying. Dude. What, like, like, it's oh, April Fool's, it's April Fool's Day, you got me, like, whatever. Shut up. Like, it's not even funny. Oh, like, sure enough, no this dude, he, so and he I said, sent a picture, and my hand is open. Oh, uh, no. yeah, that's a that's a major setback. Yeah. yeah. Does it affect your hand now? No, I, my grip is one. I don't even think about it anymore. My grip is 100%. Wow. Um, like, for a while, it was maybe like a two-month recovery. And then my first show back was OSG in 2022. And it was like, I, I think I got top five in the Farmers or something like that. Um, so wow. it, it hasn't affected me whatsoever. Good. <laughs> Strong men are known for being clumsy, but that's pretty special, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's what happened. Usually it's bolted down to my workbench, but I had this usually, 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 <laughs> uh, but I had it unbolted because I had this big, long piece of wood that I was trying to cut. And it's like right next to a cabinet. 
excuses, so like I had to, excuses, I had to like turn, He just doesn't know how to use one. I had to turn the saw to be able to get this long piece through. I didn't think about it, and it like vibrated its way to the edge and fell off. And of course, and then he tried to catch it with the back of his hand. Of course, yeah. I'm like, I don't want my equipment to fall, so I'm gonna just push it back up on the on the on the bench, and I'm pushing my hand deeper into the blade. So. <laughs> Oh man, it's like a horror show. What yeah. is this? <laughs> well, let's hope there's no more mishaps like that for the yeah. For the rest well, of the so now now I'm a now I'm a strongman coach at heavy metal, and I don't do knives anymore, and I try to keep myself as put together as I possible. Oh, we ever get to a situation where we have to like uh, at heavy metal right now? They're they're expanding the gym, so we're like we're like you know we're remodeling this one new area and everything and everything he touches. I'm like, well, hey, whoa, <laughs> are we hold it? Let's make sure everything's Easy. right before you do it. <laughs> Careful there, big guy. We're wrapping in cotton wool now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The risk assessment yeah. before Nick comes to the gym. <laughs> so, Austin, you have world's strongest man coming up, but we have to talk about it. Obviously, your first worlds. How are you feeling? How's training going? What events are you looking forward to? We've already told people what the events are anyway. So <laughs> don't worry you know, about that anymore. It's, um, you know, how are you feeling for your, your first worlds? Do you feel confident? You, what, what are your goals? What events are you looking forward to? So, um, he looks better than he's ever looked. As his training partner of, of four plus years, he's looked he looks insane right now. I feel yeah, I, I, I definitely feel good. Um, I think I think sometimes I let the like how big the show is um, get to me a little bit, but at the same time, at the end of the day, it's a strongman show, and that's what I love doing. So um, you know, I, obviously the goal is to make it to the finals, um, just for myself, really. Uh, I, that's why I do a sport. Honestly, at the end of the day, I do it for myself. So I, I want to, you know, it'd be nice to, to to represent Mexico and throw a Mexican flag in the finals too. Um, but you know, it's for, it's for me. It's for my family. Um, you know, my last name Andrade, and uh, that's 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 what I'm excited to do is is to go out and represent. Um, and, you know, heavy metal too. Um, and my training partner. I think that's I think that's the that's what gets me excited and and really my my main motivation behind any kind of strong man thing but um obviously anything pressing i'm excited for deadlifting i'm excited for um i've really been working on my moving events ever since i got into sport when i got into sport i was really good at moving events and then i got really big to that 400 pound range and that moving event started to go down and luckily i have nick here to really push me on that um because he this dude can fly on it you know so if i can stay with with him yeah, on any kind of moving it. events then i know i'm good um but uh, I, I, I've been really focusing on moving events, my conditioning. Um, Your throwing's been getting way better. Throwing, yeah, throwing is a uh, throwing used to be a big Achilles heel for him. He couldn't do you know like fifty pounds to fifteen feet. Now he's yeah, I'm launching some weight now, be, so he's so. gonna be good. I mean, um, and his Atlas stones. We did a, we did an AMRAP like to kind of simulate a stone off. Um, oh, I, do you want to tell the number? Or not? I mean, yeah. well, I, I did fifteen reps. I'm gonna tell the weight because, well, anyways, wow. uh, I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, with basically I, zero tacky, it, it was incredible. Fifteen reps, if anything sucks. <laughs> well, I, we just kept on going right, and this is the funny part because you know he's he, he's yelling at. He just got done with the Arnold's two weeks ago, so I, we didn't. I didn't expect him to pass it back to me or anything. And he's like, I'm gonna get in your head this whole time. So like, he's passing it back to me. And he's He's talking crap to me the whole time. You're like, you're like, not gonna make it, or yeah, you know, so man journey ends right here. Any loving like, training partner would, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I know he's got the best. He he means the best for me for it. But um, I thought I did 11 reps, and we look back on the video, I did 15. Wow. So at some point, I with a few reps left in the tank. Like it wasn't a, it wasn't a maximal <laughs> set. Like he just kept going and going and. Like I was just messing with, like basically staying in his head the whole time, you know, as if, as if someone was on the other side, just, you know, talking, talking mad, you know, I don't know if I can cuss on this, but yeah, you um, can. <laughs> mad shit. Uh, and, uh, You're imagining get, Evan Singleton on the other side, right? Yeah. And, oh, see, that's, a, but Evan I got Singleton's, Nick, Evan, Evan's ain't gonna, ain't, ain't got nothing on me, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> Evan Singleton's a big goofball. Like we know he's, we know he's a, we know he's a lover, not a fighter, but like, I know what will piss him off. Oh, yeah. I know what gets in his head. So, like <laughs> mid set, you know, I can just push those buttons, and uh, yeah, he's gonna be. Oh, gonna I got some for him too. So gonna, you know, <laughs> it, goes, it goes both ways. We can, in the middle of a, a middle of a training wor uh, workout, it could go south real quick yeah. if we say certain words. So what we really want is uh, is Nick to qualify for next year's worlds, and you two end up in a stone off together. So yeah? we we actually that would be at, <laughs> that would be horrible for me, but um i'm not i'm not super good at stones i can hold my own but i'm not i'm not the best um but we have this little pattern where he'll go to a big show first and then the next year we both go so it happened with nationals in 2020 i i, w I went with him to nationals um Charmaine corp nationals here in uh us 
and uh, watched him compete, you know, got a whole bunch of experience just helping him and, and being part of it. And I was like, next year I'm going to be here. I'm going to compete. I did that. Next year we both went. Uh, same thing happened with Shaw in 2021 and 2021. Or 2022 and 2023. Yeah, so 2022 Shaw, I went with him. That was the first year they had the Open. Um, he didn't win that one, but I was there helping and, you know, sort of in backstage helping with weights and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to be here next year. I will qualify. Like, I will come back. Uh, and so I'm going to Worlds. I'm prepping with him for Worlds. I'll be there with equipment if they need me. And, you know, next year, hopefully we'll both be there. Yeah. I mean, try and follow that pattern. That's that's massively advantageous for, for you as an up and coming athlete mm. to, to get yeah. those experiences. I mean, it's great yeah. for him to have you there as his training partner, but you know, just getting that experience of being at World's Strongest Man, because I'll tell you now, it's different to any show you've ever been to. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is important to get that kind of experience, but to have it without being a competitor and then maybe come back next year as, as an athlete yourself it is going to be very valuable. Yeah. Every time we've done it, it's been, it's been such a good learning experience. Like I just I take so much away from it every single time. Well, it's just that because we're because we've become such like nerds to the sport and yeah. training yeah. that we're dissecting. Okay, this is how this event works, or this is you know you got X amount of time before the next event. This is how we like we really take Brian Shaw's approach when it comes to that. Like he's a big inspiration to us, like on on how he breaks things down to the exact centimeter or whatever, or the rec the exact second of between events, and um, so we're, we're looking at. You know that's why we got two heads better than one. So when we get out to this kind of stuff, it's it's like we're not only there having a good time, we're having fun, we're lifting, but we're absorbing all this information. So when we, so next time we get to that that show or next time we're in that situation, it's nothing new. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's plus fun. like Trey's gonna be there, help him. Like I help I help him at the Shaw. You know, it's um, I can I get an opportunity to help my friends, but then also I can learn. So it's um, it's just a good time. Are you planning on doing OSG this year, Nick? Because obviously that would be a really good opportunity to qualify for next year's world. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have one of our one of our very close friends' wedding is on that same weekend. Uh, we talked about this a little <laughs> it's, bit. It's happened two um, years in a row. Yeah, two too. years in a row. That's why we didn't <laughs> oh, do OSG man. last year. Um, and so I'm in the I'm in the bridal party. So it's going to be. I haven't decided yet either way. Um, it's going to kind of come down to what happens at the Shaw and and uh, whatever happens with the Magnus for Magnuson. So we'll see. Um, I'm leaning towards yes, but I also don't want to miss that wedding. So it's no. just going to be something. I think I think it's too early to to say yes or no to, and that's me as a training partner. I was, especially because after he won the Arnold's, like you know how you get bombarded with all these people, like hey, you should do this, you should do this, and and like kind of what happened to me at the Shaw last year, same thing happened, and then you know, um, you know, I had another Champions League show kind of present itself, and then um, obviously. A giant slide present itself and and you, you have all these people coming at you and it's it's overwhelming at sometimes and that's kind of what happened to him and i was like hey man right now let's enjoy his win that's at the end of the year we got a whole bunch of time to mm -hmm. figure it out so uh we don't i mean at the same time looking at like the big cycle of things and how the year works we're we're obviously pushing it but right now the focus is more at well, my world's obviously and then we're you know Let's, let's get the Shaw done and then figure out. Just take it one at a time. Yeah. yeah. With OSG especially, you kind of want to see the events first because the events <laughs> yeah, can be different, yeah, I, they? I, After I saw the events, after I was like, I can't do it. And I was like, whoo! Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Pack, yeah. carrying, <laughs> sandbag, medley, drag thing. Make you run a mile and then. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have been good yeah. at that though. You can move. I can move. You just don't at 3.30. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate Denny Stones. I yeah. hate them. Yeah, hate them. yeah, we You're need to talk a lot. That, how we that, that was the only event at the Arnold that wasn't in the top three. Yeah, your, your Arnold's performance was, was awesome. Yeah, it was an intense finish as well oh with that God. um Max Sandbag. Like, oh my, oh my. that was one of the most exciting things yeah, of the weekend. People were killing themselves trying to get that sandbag out. <laughs> I, I thought that there was no way. I thought, I thought that that 440 bag that I finished with would just secure my podium spot. I literally thought I had zero chance of winning. Um, and uh yeah, I was I was freaking out backstage and I was watching them go. I was like, there's no way. They just all they needed was like a 350 bag to stay on top. And I was like, there's it's over. It's over. I, I messed up on the Denny's. Um yeah. And, and it kind of in my in my training since then, I've been, you know, in my head, I've like I took third at the Arnold. You know what I mean? Like I, that was what I deserved. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I, you know, have been mindset wise since then. Um so yeah. Josh, Josh is a is a freak. Um, 
Yeah, so and the dude just popped on the scene not too long ago. Freak. Yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a freak. But like 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 yourself, it's great seeing. Like, I'm super proud of what Josh has done, the development in the last year. But y- yourself as well, and, and it, there's so many great athletes that are working hard and and getting better. And you know, you're all gonna have shows. One of you will win one, one of you will win the other. Yep. It's um, it's what this sports. So if, if if we knew we we're gonna win all the time, it almost becomes boring. Um, <laughs> yeah. And also, then you, ask you, Mitch. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you stop working as hard as well. You know, yeah. the, the losses are what make you kind of think, I need to be better. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and you go away and work hard. But um, yeah. you guys are both doing, you know, amazing things. And it's so cool to see such, you know, loyal and good training partners, you know, sticking with each other, pushing each other all the time. I think that's what half of it should be. Yeah. It's, yes, we want to win competitions. Yes, we want to go there and compete. But enjoying the ride is just as important. Yeah. I think one of my favorite moments from our little journey together has been the at the Shaw we did that Shaw Open last year where he won. Um, <laughs> we just happened to pick the same oh geez <laughs> the same number out of the hat as far as order for the first event, and yeah. we went head to head on the very first event of the Shaw last year with the press medley. Um, and it like just that video of us going out together and and doing that press medley is uh, yeah that was dope. that was favorites. that was awesome. Yeah. And it's crazy how like. You know, you're picking, you see all these big guys, and oh, yeah, we're all strong, right? And then they bring out that bag with those numbers in it. That everyone starts like, sweating. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we see it at the top one. level as well. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the pro shows. I know if I don't ask, some people will get upset with me. So, what kind of, what, what are your PB numbers right now, guys? What, what kind of weights are you lifting? Uh,. <laughs> so I don't know if awkward because Austin is an absolute beast when it comes to like, yeah. static. Add on ten percent, Nick is <laughs> fine. <laughs> but um, you know, the great so, thing with Strongman is is Strongman is about being well rounded. And, and Nick is, a, is yes. an amazing athlete, but you're both super strong. But it but it will show people, you know, you don't just need to be a powerhouse to be a, an amazing strongman. I mean, so Austin, Austin, you're dead. Your dead is like over a thousand pounds now. Yeah, so I I will that suit. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I pulled a 430 kilos at Cardiff last year. Um, raw. raw. Yeah. Raw. Just made, and I did that little thing at the end to let people know. <laughs> uh, but that, that was in itself, like, I learned a lot at that Giants live show, like, just being, you know, having access to that equipment and, and you know, because at the end of the show, my back was fried. And I was like, I realized, oh, yeah, I was the only person that pulled nine, 950 raw the yeah. whole day. So no wonder my back was fried and my glutes were fried. But I got that. I pulled the 455 uh, a couple months ago. Um, so hopefully Giants Live sees that and sends me out again so I can have a chance mm-hmm. at even bigger numbers because okay. that 1,000 pounds that I pulled was – It was so easy to. I, like the American record's going to be broken this year by Austin, I guarantee it. And the Mexican record, all the records. That's right. I got them. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I, I, I definitely – honestly, after doing that in the, in the suit and feeling the suit, uh, honestly, sky's the limit. Uh, just because every time I get into, it, I'm learning something new about it. You, you kind of every time, you know, oh, we need to pull the strap tighter here, or it needs to be higher on the hip, or something like that. So I haven't even perfected the suit, and I've already pulled a grand. Um, I think that's so that's big. Um, I mean, I've I've put a, well over 200 kilos on my head, um, and that's a log axle, or whatever you want to do. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. 440 is <laughs> going up overhead. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, I got I got those kind of numbers. Atlas stones. I, I mean, I can I can pick up some crazy stuff. Yes, like you said, statically, I'm 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 really gifted, uh, but the moving stuff, I'm I'm getting a lot better at. And I think that's why we make good training partners too, because he's got incredible static power. But I can move, I can throw, I can carry for you know distance. So we kind of together, we can kind of bounce off each other and, and improve. Wait, no, no it makes no better. slouch either. He's got you know he's got eight, he's got nine hundred pound debt, well eight eighty eight something deadlift. This is nine hundred. Nine hundred. He pulled at it the. It was elevated though, so I'm not going to count my four ten, four ten kg deadlift at the Arnold. It was elevated off the floor. I've only pulled eight. We have pulled over eight though, fifty something. Well, anyways, eight, that's eight, a, eight. A, well, that's another thing too when it comes to training like. We don't care about the numbers. I care about what I pull on competition day. That's what's important at the end of the day. It's what what you do in competition is is what counts. It's, but it's it's always nice to just kind of people love to to hear what you guys are lifting and. Yeah, I can do 180, 190 kilos overhead pretty pretty comfortably too. I did, I did 180 kilo log, um, 400 pound log, well over a year year ago ago now, pretty pretty easily. Um, Ten fifteen years ago, those were huge numbers. Like they are still, but those were you know. 
yeah. uh, winning competitions, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. No, that was just how. It, yeah, well, that's how it is in the in the, the American scene too. It's just there's a lot of static, strong dudes here, and you yeah. just mm-hmm. like I remember America's Strongest Man two years ago. Seven people hit one ninety kilos on the log, like that tied you for maybe fourth. <laughs> yeah, it's <Yeah. That's> crazy. <laughs> well, I remember when I started one eighty. What one eighty one eighty five was the world record in log when I started strongman. Yeah. You broke the British record with 191, was it, or 190? 190. Yeah, yeah. In 2012? Yeah. 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 And now that I, I just... I had the, the world record axle at 205. Yeah. It's, um, okay. yeah now, now these numbers are just like average. Oh, I remember <laughs> that. And every time you y'all drop the axle, the weights are just... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, love those rustic strongman shows. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, the equipment's a little better now. <laughs> but no, it's um, it's amazing strength the level. That, but it's like, what's amazing is how many athletes can lift yeah. these crazy numbers now. Yeah, that, that's I think each level of the sport, like every every level, has, is so saturated now with such good athletes. Yeah, like the world strongest man level, the SEL level, the national level. Like, there's so many good athletes ready to you know, swap positions. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see the next 10 years are going to be crazy for the sport. Oh, it's, you know, I, I think we're just going to have, we're going to get to that point where 30 guys turn up at worlds and you've got 30 killers. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in the past and, and even, you know, still to a degree, you can see some people that, you know, are going to be mm-hmm. fifth or six in heats, but we're getting to that point where it's getting harder. Whether well, every single group's going to be a group of death. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm I'm so scared to see what group Austin's in because he's uh, got he's got to be the I lowest. Saw, this is the worst bit now. Like you know, <sighs> and you won't know until like a day or two before because hey. you wait until everyone's landed, everyone's there. That's the beauty of sport, though. Yeah, because I'm not well. That's in this way I look at it. You could throw whoever in the group. At the end of the day, I got to go and lift it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if I don't go out and do, if I don't beat myself, then what can I ask for? You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, the best thing you can do is focus on your own performance. It would be more stressful for Nick. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I'm there helping, it's worse for me. Like when I'm competing, I can just zone out, listen to music and just get in the zone. Yeah. That's how I feel. When, too, when yeah. I'm watching him, I'm like, you know, can I be doing anything to help right now? Food, water. Yeah. Like, how can I? How can I make this better? I can't. I just sit here and watch and stress. Yeah, that's how I felt with him at the Arnold this oh, year. So. It sucks. It's horrible. I can only imagine how you were too. With I'm basically, I'm basically Liz at every competition. I don't exactly. We're the real strength, Nick. Me, you got the hair. You got the, you got the, hair, you got the locks. <laughs> just call me Auntie Nick. Auntie Nick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, you, you've both done like so well. You know, I mean, you know, Nick, this year, the, the progress I've seen from you from last year to this year has been huge. Austin, yeah. you, you you kind of you know you established yourself as a, as an absolute beast last year. Cannot wait to see what you do this year. Um, really, time to to step up and, and show people. Mm-hmm. You're one of the strongest men on the planet. And it's yeah. funny, isn't it? Because I don't mean to interrupt you, but on videos all the time, we'll see things like someone talking about Mitch Hooper saying, oh, he's the future of strongman. Like, no, he's not. Mitch is the very much here and now of yeah, strongman. Yeah. But yeah. you guys, you know, we've seen this pathway before. Some great guys have come through the amateur Arnold's. Mm-hmm. Like, Shaw Classic has established itself as a great pathway in as well. So it's exciting. I, know, I, to see, I see that list of Arnold amateur winners and I, yes. I get the chill seeing my name on the top of that. It's uh it's, it's really pretty cool surreal. It's pretty, it's pretty surreal. Well like Kiddish Koski was on that list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Novikov, Bobby Thompson, Bobby Thompson, Bobby Thompson like, Moore, Mike Thompson, Jenkins whatever. came Jenkins through that way. Was, yeah, yeah, some yeah. real beasts. Yeah. Absolutely. So, it's a pretty prestigious list. I, I post that on my Instagram and I like yeah, it gives me the chills just 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 looking at it. You're both, you're both doing fantastic. Looking forward to seeing what you do in the future, guys. You, Best of luck with, with absolutely everything. We'll, we'll be, be cheering you on from home, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you yeah. can hit Nick up for the for the scores. I'll, I'll give you guys, oh, some, yeah. sneaky, I'll give you guys you. some sneaky videos. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yes, yes. Good I've man. Got, Good I've got man. another mold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the world's strongest man. I that was a that was a joke. I'm, I, uh, you know, I don't want to offend any corporate. Uh, no, I, I want to compete next year. I was just kidding. It was a joke. 
<laughs> uh, at, at, at this point, it's too hard for them to know who things would be coming from. <laughs> <laughs> also, we're pretty sure they don't follow Strongman social media at all. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna get a leaked video, and it's just gonna be like, "Go, Austin! Go!" Yeah. The camera's shaking. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder who that. I wonder who took that video. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> oh, oh, so no, no. Look, best of luck at World's Strongest Man, Austin. Nick, thank you. Keep pushing. Make sure he stays on track. Keep pushing him for the next few weeks. And um, good luck to you for the rest of the comps you have this thank year. You. Yes. Thank you both for coming on and chatting to us. Of course. Thank uh, you. Just very quickly for people that kind of see you, want to follow your journey, where can they find you guys? So my Instagram is Nick Guardione, just all lowercase, my whole name. Um, and we're going to start a YouTube channel here pretty soon, the Texas Boys, just for little funny gym clips. Yeah. Um, my Instagram's uh, Smash Andrade with two underscores, so Smash underscore underscore Andrade. If you need to say it that way, I'll link, I'll link you guys in the description. <laughs> you. Awesome! Thank you so much, guys. I hope everyone enjoyed our chat with these two awesome athletes from Texas. Go and give them a follow, and um, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>